The Ethernet GPI link box has been a product in our range for so long and it's a very popular little device. You can get it in um, a 2x8 channel configuration where you have 8 inputs and 8 outputs. It has a connector that's compatible with the um, Blackmag Blackmagic ATEM GPI Tally interface. And uh, we also have a version uh, with double up. So you have additional 2x8 channels of I.O. And one of the fantastic things about the recent development with Unisketch software on our controllers and our device cores is that we can utilize these for lots of other things than connecting to ATEM switches. And in this case today, I brought two which are set up to communicate with each other. So essentially, we have um, the way I've configured it here, created a GPI transported over IP. So with these two test boards, um, you see here with the uh, two controllers, you see I have a test board connected to each of them. And um, the test board has buttons that will allow me to trigger the inputs in both cases. It has LEDs that will light up when the relays are shorted. This power supply is just power for the LEDs. In the other end, you see it's connected over Ethernet to a network switch. Obviously, they would have two different IP addresses. These are USB cables for the config, uh, configuration I'll show you in just a second. And then, of course, power for the device itself. If you want, optionally, like on all our controllers, you can have power over Ethernet. So you could, have, uh, you could actually omit this cable if you want just this one to drive the entire system. So... Let's get right to the demonstration. As I press this button, you see the LED light up over here. When I press the next one, so you can see over Ethernet, I am manipulating the relays on this Ethernet GPI link box. And likewise, I set up these contacts to manipulate the relays on the other one. All right, so how did I manage to set up this magic? Well, let's take a look at the configuration because that will reveal to us how these devices operate. First of all, one of them, this one, is a server. So you can connect over Telnet to this one. And this one is a client to this guy. Aha! Does that mean I could connect my laptop or some other device that's compatible with TCP IP to this guy? Yes, you can. So let's bring up Terminal. And um, this command if I'm telnetting to this IP address, which is the IP address of my server, on the port you see right here, you'll see I'm now connected. If I write list, I'll get a list of um, various registers inside, something called flags, memory, shift states, blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of things. Now, the ones that you need to look at are the flags because the flags are binary memory positions inside the device, which are the ones we're using to manipulate this transaction. And we'll see that in just a moment. Maybe I'll just pull this window over here and then open the Skyhoy firmware updater app, which is currently connected to, okay, to the server, right? All right, so now what we're doing is, uh, you see the server is here. I'm pressing the open configuration button and a web browser will now open. So in this web browser, we see the configuration for 2x8 GPIO TCP server, which is one of the default configurations you find for um, the uh, Ethernet GPI link product today. And with this one, we could take a look at what happens when I press button number one. So what I did before pressing button number one will be revealed by looking at the configuration of this hardware interface component. I click it and the page will jump down to the configuration. So upon a trigger on input number one, I will set system flag number eight to true, which is implicitly what this is saying, for as long as I hold it down. So it means that when I release the trigger again, it will be set back to false. So obviously you could have two buttons where one would set true and the other one would set false. And each of them, if you press it repeatedly and when you release it, it's still just having this memory position set as true. So in this case, we set it up as a hold system. Okay, so I press it down, it's true. I rift again, it's, it's false. And that's the same for input number two. 
and input number three and so forth. In other words, flag number eight should be manipulated. And I'll now show you what happens if I go over to the terminal window, because in the terminal window, you will see this reflected. So now I press it down and I release it again. And you see in the terminal window, you see flag number eight equals one. I release flag number eight equals zero. I press the second flag nine is one flag nine is zero. All right. So um, what about the outputs? If I go back to my web browser and scroll to the top, you see the output, the relay on the server. What about that one? I click here and it's also associated with the system flag. Now, because it's an output, the important thing is not what this one is set to. Actually, you can see it's like all outputs would manipulate flag number zero. But since an output doesn't manipulate anything, the important information is the feedback flag. So basically, which memory flag are we using to drive the output state? And it turns out that all the relays are hooked up with flag number zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. Now let's go back to the terminal where I'm looking into this device. And it turns out when I press the button on the, um, I'll just change over here so you can see what happens. When I press the first button here, and if you look at the monitor, the uh, Telnet monitor, I press the button now, and you see as the relay, the first relay lights up, you can also see that flag number one was, uh, flag number zero was set to one. I'm now releasing again. And flag number zero is set back to zero. You see it right here. You see it along with some other information called HVC number one, HVC 35 equals something else. And this information you just have to disregard for now. But when I press and release, you see repeatedly how flag number zero is set to one or zero. I now go to the next button and do the same thing. And you see it's changing this. Okay, so what's the takeaway message here? Well, um, it turns out that the server has its memory flags manipulated. So when I press buttons here, it's changing its own flags. But when I press buttons on the client over here, it is changing, uh, the client is changing flags inside the server, which is reflected on the relay outputs. So if I change my USB cables, so as I change the USB cables, we can now take a peek into how, um, I think I may have to just reset them. Okay. So now you can see the client. You see now the client was rebooted Originally it failed because I removed the power of the server. Now it's connected, it's initialized and so forth. Well, what I wanted to do was to take a look at the configuration of the client over here, which I'm doing right now. You see, I have a, a, a default configuration called two by eight GPIO Unisketch TCP client setup. And when I press any of the um, in actions, you can see it's gonna uh, send, use a device call called Unisketch TCP client where it's manipulating flags, flag zero, flag one, flag two, th flag three, using hold down functionality. And that corresponds completely with what we just saw, namely that these buttons would manipulate and set flags in the server. Actually, we could do all this from the uh, Telnet client itself. I'll just have to close it down and open it again because we had it um, disconnected. So, um, if I list here, what I can actually do for, for, from this Telnet connection is to manipulate um, the, the first relay directly by typing in flag number zero equals one. And that will result in the LED of this uh, right here when I execute this. So now I press enter and you'll see setting flag number zero equal to one will turn this relay on. Setting flag zero equals zero we'll turn it off again. Okay, so this demonstrates how you could link two boxes together, but it doesn't even stop there because you can connect more than just two. It's not a, a just two. You can actually have multiple clients connected to the same server and you could do some pretty funky stuff, which we'll do now with a tally box. 
We have added a Skahoy Tally Box system to the mix. It's connected with two Skahoy Tally lamps. It's also connected with Ethernet to the network switch. And we have an ATEM switch that connects us as well. You see it in the background on my screen. Uh, the ATEM software control of the switcher. And since this has the default configuration, it's configured to show program and preview tally from the ATEM switcher. I can uh, demonstrate it to you if you look at the lamps. And uh, let's just look at the lamps here. You can see how um, this lamp is green, this one is red. And now as I press the space bar to cut, you see how these lamps change its color. So now this is green and this is red. I cut again and it's gonna change back. So that's a basic tally system. Now, the fun thing is that we are now going to change the configuration. So we go to the Skahoy firmware application. We uh, have this one connected uh, with USB to the laptop. So I press open configuration and it takes us right to this page. So we can see currently the ATEM tally is the configuration that's hosted on the box. Um, but this is not going to last for long because the first thing we want to do is to add the client that can connect to um, the uh, TCP server on this Ethernet GPI link. And um, because we want this one to communicate with the Ethernet GPI link. So the first thing we'll do is to... Um, sorry, no, we'll not create a new configuration. We'll simply add a new device, add a new device. And then in the bottom, we find uh, Unisketch TCP client. Unisketch TCP client, we save settings. Then we need to go to controller configuration. And now we see we have a new device call called Skahoy Unisketch TCP client. There is even some description here. Hey, that's neat. Great. Um, ah, there is actually, if we go here, there is even a manual just to make sure that you are aware of that. So that will take you to our GitHub repository and you can see what each of these um, actions you can choose mean. Like what does it mean to set a flag? And that's going to be described here uh, with a reference to a different document, it seems. But anyway, um, sorry, uh, I need to change to a different tab. Maybe go back here. So I go back to the co controller configuration. Now, what I want to do is I want to hook up one of these tally lamps to the internal registers on the server. So uh, we looked at a flag number zero and one being the ones that drove the relay output on this one. So what if I over network want this lamp to reflect the state of the same flags? I could easily do that now by simply going to uh, program and say the configuration for uh, the, the program lamp. Sorry, it's actually this one over here. That's the first one. I'm now going to change it to Unisketch TCP flag. And then it's going to reflect the state of flag number zero. And for the preview on this lamp, I'm going to change this to flag number one. Now, we are still reflecting the state of the ATEM switcher on the second lamp. So it's only the first lamp that now has its state redirected to the state of the flags inside of the TCP controller for whatever reason we might want to do this. But of course, if you have a tally lamps that do not only reflect states in an ATEM switcher, but you want to uh, reflect states from a GPI input on a device like this one, then this is an example of how powerfully you can reconfigure this device. And just think the same, you could actually install a device core for a video hub or something else like or a recording device um, and let the state of these devices determine the output on the lamps. But anyway, let's, let's get to it here. We have now configured these to reflect those states and we need also to uh, set up the uh, IP address of the server. So I'm doing it right here. And I think it was 63. Uh, and my ATEM switch had this IP. So save settings. And what I need to do now is to get it loaded into my box over here. So it's simply going back to the Skahoy firmware update app and press check for updates. And within a few seconds or minutes, the new firmware will be downloaded. 
And now we are almost done with the firmware installation. What I would like to do is open the serial monitor just quick and see how the whole board initializes. You see um, we have two device cores installed and they have these IP addresses they try to connect to. We can also see from the status messages here that actually we have a perfectly working connection to the ATEM switcher as well as the Unisketch TCP client. So it should actually be working as we want it. First of all, let's just check that the ATEM switcher is still working. So if we look at the second lamp over here, it's currently green. And now as I press the cut button, we see it changes to red. So we have red, green, red, green. Now, what if I change the state of these relays? We see for the first one, yes, the relay is flipping. And we also have the red tally on the lamp. And now I press the second one. This relay is flipping, and yes, we have the green tally on the lamp transferred by network over to the Skyhoy Telebox system from the client via the TCP server. Very flexible system indeed.